अरे बॉयज गेट इट क्विकली अदरवाइज टू लेटर ऑन ओके बॉयज वी हैव स्टार्टेड एब्डोमन यू हैड वन क्लास यस्टरडे एंटी एब्डोमल वॉल ऑल राइट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज द एब्डोमल केविटी एब्डोमल केविटी इज द केविटी विच इज बाउंडेड अबाउ बाय द डायफ्राम and below by the pelvic wing i am telling you about the abdominal cavity below the pelvic wing there lies the pelvic cavity and combinedly it is called as abdomino pelvic cavity that means <coughs> <coughs> the abdominal cavity including pelvic cavity you have done the thorax yes or no forget sir because you have not done the dissection of the thorax so you didn't remember whether it has been taught you or not all right today in dh i will start the dissection of thorax first so as in the thorax the lungs are enclosed in the pleural cavity heart is enclosed in pericardial cavity similar to this thorax and abdomen the abdominal viscerals all the abdominal viscerals they are surrounded by the serous sac this serous sac is called very thin so the thin serous sac is called peritoneum so what is a peritoneum that is a thin serous sac and lying in the serous sac there is present all the viscerals so if we see the first initial stage of peritoneum look the diagram it is a serous sac in this serous sac the viscerals are invaginated try to understand it is a closed serous sac and in this closed serous sacs as you are wearing the apron okay below the apron you are sparing the all the inner clothes and in the pockets of the cloth you are putting the something mobile or whatever you want purse and all that so try to understand in the peritoneum it is a, just like a apron the viscerals are invaginating in it whatever the viscerals invaginating they are surrounding again by the cloth as we are wearing the inner clothes so as the viscerals invaginate in they are surrounding by the another part of the peritoneum and initially i have told you that it is a closed serous sac and in this closed serous sac as the viscerals are invaginated as the viscerals are invaginated they are dividing this into the two layers of the peritoneum the outer layer of the peritoneum which is lining the interior part of the abdominal pelvic cavity that is called parietal peritoneum and the part of the peritoneum which is lining the viscerals that is called visceral peritoneum so see the diagram this is the parietal peritoneum look here as the structure invaginating the viscerals invaginating inside the peritoneum they are having their own layer of the peritoneum and that layer which is closely adherent to the viscerals that is called visceral peritoneum dekhiye pura sac hai is sac ke andar jaise jaise part andar ja rahe hain they divide this sac into the different parts 
as this hand is going inside this is covered by the cloth this is the visceral peritoneum and the surrounding part that is called parietal peritoneum so point is this this parietal peritoneum it is lining the interior part of the abdominal cavity i have told you the abdominal cavity is limited above by the diaphragm and below by the pelvic rim and below this pelvic rim there is the part of the discharge this is called pelvic cavity so combinedly we name this as abdomino pelvic cavity now part is the parietal peritoneum or the outer part of the peritoneum lining the interior part of abdomino pelvic cavity second thing this parietal peritoneum it is connected with the abdominal wall by means of loose connective tissue try to understand so when we open the abdominal cavity it is very easy to separate the parietal peritoneum reason the parietal peritoneum is loosely attached with the abdominal pelvic wall so we can easily strip off the parietal peritoneum opposite to this the visceral peritoneum which is surrounding the viscera this one viscera is surrounding by this this is the visceral peritoneum of this viscera this is for this this is for this like that so visceral peritoneum opposite to the parietal peritoneum is closely adherent to the viscera and they cannot be easily strip off from the viscera is it clear so peritoneum is a serous sac and this serous sac is dividing into two parts parietal peritoneum and visceral peritoneum the parietal peritoneum is the part of peritoneum which is lining the interior part of abdominal cavity and pelvic cavity and this is loosely attached with the ball of abdominal cavity or peritoneal cavity this is parietal peritoneum and visceral peritoneum is closely adherent to the vessels or the viscera let's see the difference between the two parietal peritoneum and visceral peritoneum the parietal peritoneum is developed from somatic somatopleuric layer of the lateral plate of mesoderm parietal pleura develops from somatopleuric layer of lateral plate of the mesoderm visceral pleura it is the visceral part of the peritoneum or that is called visceral pleura that is developed from splanchno splanchno pleuric layer of the lateral plate of mesoderm as their development is different the parietal pleura is derived nerve supply from the somatic pleural layer or somatic nerves parietal pleura derives its nerve supply from the somatic nerves and because of that listen carefully the parietal pleura derives its nerve supply from the somatic nerves so whenever there is a cut or any incision given that is painful that is painful the reason because it is supplied by somatic nerves opposite to this visceral pleura it is deriving its nerve supply from the autonomic nervous system as a result of it there is it is not sensitive to cut or incision by pain madam peritoneum is very important the persons who are 
whom you are seeing is not so intelligent, not in, so important. Can't you do later on? Why are you disturbing the whole class? Or are you Listen, boys. I allowed late comers, but it not means that you disturb the whole class. Enter in the class and sit down silently. Karu start. Ho gaya apka? I am telling you the difference between parietal peritoneum and visceral peritoneum. The parietal peritoneum, as it is developed from somatopleuric layer of the lateral plate of the mesoderm, it derives its nerve supply from the somatic nerves. So it is very sensitive to cut or incision, very painful. Opposite to this, the visceral peritoneum is receiving the developed from the Plenipotentiary layer of the lateral plate of mesoderm, and its nerve supply it derives its nerve supply from autonomic nervous system. So it is not sensitive to pain by cut or incision. The first difference between the two, as we see, another thing is one is the abdominal cavity. And second is peritoneal cavity. Abdominal cavity is the whole cavity in which the different viscera are lying. That is called abdominal cavity. And I have told you the wall of the abdominal cavity, above by the diaphragm and below by this pelvic rim and this. Peritoneal cavity. It is a potential space. It is a potential space between the parietal layer and visceral layer of the peritoneum. It is filled up with the serous sac. That is the peritoneal cavity. The presence of serous sac helps in the movements of different viscera very easily or slippery without the disturbing the other viscera that is the help of the serous fluid which is present in the peritoneal cavity another thing comes the peritoneal cavity in female and difference between male and female what is the difference between peritoneal cavity that i am telling you Look the diagram. In the male, the peritoneal cavity is closed sac. In the male, the peritoneal cavity is closed sac. In female, the peritoneal cavity opens outside by means of the uterine tubes, also from the part of the uterus and also from the part of vagina. So, in the peritoneal cavity is open to the outside. And how it opens outside that I have told you, by the uterine tubes, by the uterus, and by the vagina, and that is the reason the infections in female are very common. After this, when we see, as I that different viscera invaginating inside the peritoneal cavity, and the viscera. Which are invaginating in the peritoneal cavity. These viscera are called entry, omenta, and so I am telling you about the different folds, folds of peritoneum. What is the folds of peritoneum? As I have told you, see the first diagram. Look here. As the viscera is invaginating, they are surrounding by this layer of the peritoneum. That is visceral peritoneum, and this visceral peritoneum is forming the double layer, and 
the viscera are suspending inside the part of peritoneal cavity. So these double layer fold of peritoneum, they are called the folds of peritoneum. And these folds of peritoneum are different according to the viscerals. For example, the stomach is suspended. The stomach is suspended. And these folds are lesser momentum, greater momentum, like that. So I am telling you now the different folds of peritoneum. Why are you coming today? Can come tomorrow also. Sit down. Now look this diagram. This is the liver. And liver is also surrounding by the peritoneum. And the part of peritoneal folds which are attached, they are forming the ligaments. So the peritoneal folds are of different. First is the mesentery. First is the mesentery. The mesentery are suspending the small intestine including the jejunum and ileum from the posterior abdominal wall. Are you clear about the posterior abdominal wall? In the posterior abdominal wall, this is the vertebral column. On each side of the vertebral column, there is the swas major muscle. Next to the swas major muscle, that comes the quadratus lumborum. And like that, then comes the flat muscles of the anterior lateral wall of the abdomen that you have done yesterday. External oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominals like that. So this is the posterior abdominal wall. Now I am telling you that the small intestine, the part of the small intestine, jejunum and ileum, they are suspending from posterior abdominal wall to the part of abdominal cavity. And these folds, double layer folds of the visceral peritoneum, which are completely enclosing the part of jejunum and ileum. And these folds, by these folds, the jejunum and ileum are suspending in the part of peritoneal cavity. So, these folds of peri visceral peritoneum, which are suspending the jejunum and ileum, they are called mesentery. They are called mesentery. And these mesentery, they are containing the fats. They can store the fat. They have the blood vessels, branches of jejunum and ileum, branches of superior mesentery arteries and nerves. So all these things, they are present in the part of mesentery. So first is the mesentery. Second come, the omentum, or at that time, mesenteries, they are suspending the jejunum and ileum. Similarly, the colon is also suspending by mesentery. First thing, you are late. Second thing, you are daring that you are coming like that. Now, listen. I excuse all the things. The colon is also suspending by the mesentery, that is called mesocolon. Next to that, the stomach, it is also suspended in the peritoneal folds. And these peritoneal folds, they are attached at the two borders of the stomach. One is along the lesser curvature of the stomach, that is called lesser omentum and another is suspending from greater curvature of the stomach to the transverse colon that is called greater momentum. I will discuss these two in detail. Next to that, then comes the part of the ligaments. At certain viscera, these folds, they are attached to the viscera 
either to the part of anti abdominal wall or to the other viscera also for example the stomach is suspended by the two omentum on the posterior side the stomach is attached with the spleen and these folds of peritoneum which is attached the stomach to the spleen they are called gastrospinic ligament gastrospinic ligament and similarly the spleen is attached also to the part of kidney that is called leno renal ligament leno renal ligament l i e n o leno renal leno is used for the spleen and renal is used for the kidney that ligament is called leno renal ligament similarly the look here the liver is also attached with the diaphragm and these ligaments are different type one is the the sac and the ligament which are attached the left and right coronary ligament superior layer of the coronary ligament inferior layer of the coronary ligament like that so different part of the folds of peritoneum they are not only suspended the organs but they also attach the viscera with the part of anti abdominal wall or other viscera that is the point after this look here the diagram this is the stomach as i have told you stomach is attached with the along with lesser curvature with the part of the liver and that is called lesser omentum i will talk to discuss detail and look downward this is the part this is the greater omentum so greater omentum attached to the greater curvature of the stomach to the part of transverse colon and similarly the transverse colon is also attached with another fold that is called transverse mesocolon so this is the diagram showing this is the part of parietal peritoneum and visceral peritoneum now see the starting from the developmental part if we see the development in the initial part the git hole is developed in the straight tube as the diagram is showing it is developed in the straight tube and this part this is called the part is the frontal lobe sorry this is the part of the foregut and this is the part of midgut and this is the part of hindgut so if we see the developmentally the git hole is developed in a straight tube and we divide this into three parts foregut midgut and hindgut the foregut part that is the part look here this is the common the part of the duodenum and the part of the foregut now i am telling you what are the parts including the foregut the foregut including the abdominal part of the esophagus and the stomach and the part of in duodenum there is the opening of common bile duct the part of the duodenum above the opening of common bile duct is including in the foregut so foregut including the part of esophagus abdominal part of esophagus the stomach and the part of the duodenum above the origin of common bile duct that is the part of foregut the middle gut or the mid gut is including the part of the duodenum below opening of common bile duct jejunum ileum cecum appendix ascending colon and transverse colon up to the part of medial to third part of the transverse colon or right to third part of the transverse colon all these are the part of mid gut hindgut 
including the parts left one third part of the transverse colon descending colon sigmoid colon rectum and upper half of the anal canal that are the part of hindgut the point is this will help you later on also what are the parts of foregut what are the parts of hindgut what are the parts of midgut each gut is having its own blood supply the blood supply of the foregut see the diagram it is supplying by the celiac artery the branches of celiac artery supplying the part of the visceral lying in the foregut then see the midgut the artery of the midgut is the superior mesenteric artery this is the abdominal aorta so all these are branches coming celiac trunk and also the superior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric artery all are coming from the ventral surface of abdominal aorta the artery of the midgut is the superior mesenteric artery artery of the hindgut is the inferior mesenteric artery and all these three are the branches coming from abdominal aorta from the front row or ventral surface after this now i am coming to the part let's see how the peritoneum develops and how the viscera they coming look the first foregut in the anterior part of the foregut that is this part this is called ventral mesogastrium this is called ventral mesogastrium i am talking of foregut the ear part of the foregut is called ventral mesogastrium and posteriorly this part is called dorsal mesogastrium so the foregut is dividing into two parts ventral mesogastrium and dorsal mesogastrium but as we see the diagram in the midgut no there is only single mesogastrium is not divided into two parts that is single dorsal and similarly the hindgut only the foregut is dividing into two parts ventral mesogastrium and dorsal mesogastrium now see the ventral mesogastrium in the ventral mesogastrium as the liver invaginates as the liver comes the liver as it invaginates in the ventral mesogastrium it again dividing this ventral mesogastrium the part of the ventral mesogastrium anterior to the liver that is this part for anterior part and this is the posterior part of the ventral mesogastrium of the foregut the point is this that this ventral mesogastrium as it is absorbed the different structures are developed that i will tell you now another similarly there is the dorsal mesogastrium it absorbs it develops the different structure first of all the anterior part of ventral mesogastrium that is anterior to this part of the liver this is developed in the part of lesser omentum the splenic ligaments look this diagram this is the liver okay as the ventral mesogastrium anterior part absorbs it is forming these different ligaments look here this is the ligaments which is in the shape of the triangular folds and another above look this this is the diaphragm so the all the derivatives which are developed from the ventral mesogastrium these are the superior layer of the coronary ligament left triangular ligament right triangular ligament and the sickle shape fold that is this one this sickle shape fold is called the falciform ligament now look this falciform ligament this falciform ligament 
lower down. This is the umbilicus, this one. It is extending from umbilicus to the posterior part of the anterior abdominal wall, attached to the anterior abdominal wall posteriorly below of the abdominal cavity, anterior abdominal space of the diaphragm, like this. And posteriorly or inferiorly, it is free margin. the notch below the inferior border of the liver, like this. So this hole is called falciform ligament. So falciform ligament is a sickle-shaped fold of peritoneum. And this sickle-shaped fold of peritoneum is the derivatives of the ventral mesogastrium, anterior part of ventral mesogastrium. The attachment of this sickle-shaped fold is starting from the umbilicus. Then it is attached to the posterior part or posterior surface of the anterior abdominal wall. And reaching up to the liver, it is attached anterior surface of the liver and also the part of the superior surface of the liver and then it is reflected over the part of diaphragm. The part of the folds which are lining the superior surface of the liver they are called superior coronary layer and inferior coronary layer and also these two layers fuse laterally they are forming the lateral liver ligament and also the right triangular ligament left that we talk as we come to liver <coughs> so I have told you just the Derivatives developed from the ventral mesogastrium, that is the sickle shaped fold, superior layer, coronary ligament, and also the inferior layer of the coronary ligament, and the fusion of it is on the right side called right triangular ligament. Look the posterior surface of the falciform ligament, that is this one. As I have told you that this is free, it is not attached with any part of the viscerals and like this. This free border of sickle chip fold is containing the part of obliterated part of left umbilical vein, the serious layer. <coughs> then see the posterior part or the dorsal part. I have told you the ventral part, just posterior to the liver. That part that is this one. This is forming the lesser omentum. Look here. This is the stomach. This is the greater lesser curvature of the stomach. So lesser omentum is connecting the lesser curvature of the stomach with the part of the liver. Look, this is the liver. So I am talking of this fold. This is the lesser omentum. So all these are the derivatives of Bent geogastrium of the foregut. I am coming back. Try to understand. Now look this part. This is the stomach. This is the greater curvature of the stomach. This is the lesser omentum. You are seeing this green color structure. This is the lesser omentum. And this lesser momentum is connecting with the lesser curvature of the stomach and part of the duodenum. Okay. And another layer of it is connecting with the liver. On the liver it is connecting with the inverted L-shaped structure, this one. This inverted L-shaped structure, this is for the fissure for the ligamentum venosum. The L-shaped structure, this is the fissure for ligamentum venosum. So lesser momentum connection are to lesser curvature of the stomach and l the inverted L-shaped structure that is fissure for ligamentum venosum and this is the porta hepatis. That's the part of lesser momentum. So at present, I am telling you just the two things of ventral mesogastrium. 
the absorption of the ventral mesogastrium the anterior part as the liver invaginate divides into two parts anterior part and posterior part anterior part of it is developing the falciform ligament coronary ligament and all that the posterior part of it is developing the lesser curvature of the stomach see the posterior part before that i am taking with the two things that the viscera which are suspending from the posterior abdominal by the folds of peritoneum as we had talked mesenteries the mesocolon and also the ligaments and all that the purpose why these viscera are they are protection one thing the viscera all these surrounding by the peritoneum they are providing the protection to the all the viscera and second thing the these viscera which are suspended by the peritoneal folds they are mobile they can move freely but there are the certain viscera which are not suspended in the folds rather they are attached to the posterior abdominal wall and they are very partly covered by the peritoneum so the viscera which are not covered fully i am using the word not covered fully by the peritoneum they are suspended from the perito posterior abdominal wall these viscera which are behind the peritoneum are called the retroperitoneal organs i am using the word retro peritoneal organs that means the viscera which are not covered fully by the peritoneum rather they are suspended from the posterior abdominal wall retro peritoneal organs again dividing into two parts the question asks in the mcq the retro peritoneal organs first of all you must understand what is the retro peritoneal organ that is the organs which are suspended from posterior abdominal wall not covered fully by the peritoneum and these retro peritoneal organs are of two types primary retro peritoneal organs and secondary retro peritoneal organs the primary retro peritoneal organs are the organs which are initially not covered by any part of peritoneum very few part of them are connected covered these primary retro peritoneal organs example are kidney supra renal gland and ureter these are the three which are named as primary retro peritoneal organs then there are the organs viscera which are initially covered by only by the peritoneum but as the growth comes forward these viscera they are the peritoneum is absorbed and the process by which the peritoneum is absorbed that is the procedure by which the peritoneum is absorbed that is called zygosis Z by G O S I S. Go back to your class. Why don't you take the notes? So, I told you the thing that the viscera which are retro peritoneal organs from the beginning that these are called primary retro peritoneal organs. Secondary peritoneal organs. The second thing I am telling you that the viscera. which are the part of the viscera peritoneum they absorb later on and these are the example of it is the duodenum the initial 2 cm part of duodenum is covered by peritoneum very important thing i am telling you in duodenum only the initial 2 cm part of duodenum is covered by per rest of the part of duodenum is 
peritoneum is absorbed. That is, absorption is by zygosis. Only the initial 2 cm part of duodenum is covered by peritoneum. Rest of the part of duodenum is not covered by peritoneum. Second thing, ascending colon. Look here. This is the ascending colon. Cecum, ascending colon. They are, their mesentery is absorbed. Okay, they are not covered by the mesentery. No, not any fold. Then the descending column, you can see here. The descending column, its peritoneum fold is also absorbed. Then the upper two-third part of the rectum, that is also not covered by peritoneum. So these structures, these viscera, they are named as secondary retroperitoneal organs. Secondary retroperitoneal organs. So what is the secondary retroperitoneal organs? The organs which are, the, which viscera are later on absorbed by the zygosis. These are the secondary retroperitoneal organs. And the example of it is, except the initial 2 cm part of duodenum, the rest of the part of duodenum is called secondary retroperitoneal organs. Second, ascending column, cecum. I am not using the word appendix. You can see here the major appendix that is suspending the appendix. Similarly, look here the transverse column. There is, this is the transverse major column, and this is the mesentery that is suspending the part of jejunum and ileum. And look. The another part is descending colon, which is also a secondary retroperitoneal organs. Should I repeat the secondary retroperitoneal organs? The first initial two centimeter, except the initial two centimeter part of the duodenum, the rest of the parts of duodenum, the part of the pancreas which is not shown in the diagram, only the tail of pancreas is covered by peritoneum. Rest of the part of pancreas is not covered by peritoneum. That is also the example of secondary retroperitoneal organs. Excluding the tail of pancreas, the whole part of pancreas is not covered by peritoneum. Ascending colon. <coughs> Ascending colon upper two-third part of the rectum and part of the anal canal, upper part. All these are the secondary retroperitoneal organs. <coughs> After this, now see the two structures, lesser omentum and greater omentum. Now I am talking of the peritoneal folds which are important and why they are important that I will tell you. <clears throat> Look the greater momentum. It is double layer fold of peritoneum. What happens? The peritoneum covering the anterior surface of peritoneum and the posterior surface of the stomach. These two layers descending downward. As they reaching downward, again the two layers of the peritoneum ascending upwards. And they are reaching to the part of upper ends. Look this diagram, you can understand very well. Look, this is the stomach. Okay. The anterior surface of the stomach is covered by this visceral peritoneum, the posterior surface covering from this surface of the peritoneum, stomach. Both the layers, first and second layer, descending downwards. As they descending downward, the, there is no limit up to what level they descend downward. Okay. This is variable. Now, after reaching downward, they ascending upwards. They ascending upwards. And look here. The first layer is this one. Okay. Now this becomes fourth layer. See the diagram. The first layer is this one. 
as it's ascending upwards, it becomes fourth layer. See the second layer. The second layer, as it is ascending upwards, becomes the third layer. So, all these layers, they ascending upwards and reaching the anterior part and then they reaching up to the part of inferior layer, posterior layer of the liver. So, they are forming this, the whole thing, this is the greater momentum. So, what is the greater momentum? That is the large fold of peritoneum, which is consisting of four layers. The first and second layer of the greater momentum is from the anterior and posterior surface of the stomach. The peritoneum covering its anterior and posterior surface of the stomach, descending downwards and ascending upwards, forming the third and fourth layer of the greater momentum, and reaching to the lower part of the stomach. One thing you can see in this diagram. This is the one cavity behind this stomach. You see the cavity? This cavity is covered by the blue area. Try to understand. I am simplified. Jitna simplified kar sakta kar raho. Try to understand. You are seeing here the blue area. Dekha the blue color ka area behind the stomach and the part including here in the greater omega. This blue area is called lesser sac of the stomach. This is called lesser sac of peritoneum. The peritoneal cavity is the one is larger sac that is lying anterior to the greater curvature of the stomach and this part. And one is the lesser sac. Look this diagram. This is the lesser sac. And this whole complete part, this is the greater sac that I will talk on the next. So, now see the greater momentum. What is the contents which are present in the greater momentum? Look here, this is the greater momentum. The fat can deposit easily in the greater momentum. So 30% the fat is depositing in the greater momentum. One thing. Another thing you are seeing the patches here. These milky patches, they are due to the deposition of macrophages. So macrophages also deposit present in the part of greater momentum and this macrophages is the part which is acting as a phagocytic part. They engulf the foreign particles and destroy them. Besides these, they are also containing the blood vessels, the arteries which are present along the greater curvature of the stomach. Lesser epiploic arteries, epiploic arteries, they Momentum. So these are the contents of greater momentum. <clears throat> now what is the function of greater momentum? The greater momentum, it is first is that fat storage. It is, it can store the fat. Second, it is having the macrophages and these macrophages helps in protection that they are acting as a phagocytic, so they protect the stomach from the infection and this thing. Third thing, very important, that greater momentum acts as a policeman of the abdomen. And this is commonly asked in MCQ or maybe as a short question. How it acts as a policeman? Now try to listen. As there is an infection, look here, the greater momentum is present here. This is not only concerned with the stomach. 
this can spread on this direction, this can spread here, anywhere, in the part of greater sec. Greater of infection. The site of infection and surround this area like a policeman. If there is an infection on this side, the greater momentum reach here, infected site. So it limits the spreading infection of the abdomen. Both see the work. Just like a policeman, it reaches to the site of infection and surround the infection site. So it limits the spread of infection. One thing is this. Second, if there is a perforation, if there is a perforation, perforation is the <coughs> anything open and through that the structure of the GIT comes out. That is called perforation, opening. So what happened? At the site of perforation, the greater momentum reach and plug that plug that perforation by its spreading. Jaan khadda dekha wahan pe pohuncha aur yon perforate kar diya. Plug kar diya. So because of this nature, the greater momentum is called policeman of the abdomen. Because of that it is called policeman of the abdomen. So these are the advantage of greater momentum. Then come to the lesser momentum. See the lesser momentum. The lesser momentum, it is attached along the lesser curvature of the stomach. It is attached along the lesser curvature of the stomach. And also including the upper part of the first two part of the duodenum. Look here. This is the duodenum. So it is attached along the lesser curvature of the stomach and as also at the part of the first two centimeter of the duodenum. From this side, the lesser momentum reaching upwards, reaching to the liver. And on the liver, it is attached on the ligamentum venosum. The ligament attachment of the ligamentum venosum is like this, inverted L-shaped. So above it is attached on the ligamentum venosum and also to the surrounding of porta hepatis. This is the porta hepatis. That is the attachment of lesser momentum. This lesser momentum it contains, and this is the free border of the lesser momentum. This free border of the lesser momentum is containing what are the structures present in the porta hepatis? See the diagram. Bile duct, the portal vein, and also the part of hepatic artery. All these three structures, they are present in the porta hepatis. Again, the bile duct, hepatic artery, and the part of the right gastric art, the part of the hepatic artery, portal vein and wild duct. All these three structures, they are present in the part of the mesentery. Look, the mesentery is the double layer fold of visceral peritoneum by which the jejunum and ileum are suspended from posterior abdominal wall. So look here. It is having the two attachments. One, the mesentery which is attached to the posterior abdominal wall. That is called the fixed attachment. And another is the free end of the mesentery folds. Look here. This is the jejunum and ileum. They are suspending like this. Okay. So this is the free fold, free end of the mesentery, and this is the fixed. So just like this, the jejunum and ileum, 
they are suspended from the posterior abdominal wall by these two layer fold of the visceral peritoneum and this is called mesent so as we know that mesent is having the two ends one is the free end another is the fixed end so fixed end of the mesent this is called root of mesent this is called root of mesent and another is the free end which is expanding downward in the abdominal cavity the attachment of root of mesent is very important the root of mesent is attached to the left side of the l2 vertebrae i am telling you the attachment of mesent and that is called root of mesent the root of mesent is attached see the diagram it is not straight it is attached obliquely and the attachment is extending from above to downward this is commonly asked in the viva or also come in the exam the attachment of root of mesent see this part above it is attached left side of the l2 vertebra and that is called duodeno jejunal flexure this is called duodeno jejunal flexure okay then it is attached along the whole part of here and descending downward and reaching to the right sacroiliac joint reaching to the right sacroiliac joint here that is attachment of root of mesent tree above to the duodeno jejunal flexure and duodeno jejunal flexure is present just left to the l2 vertebra and downward reaching downward reaching to the right sacroiliac joint that is attachment of root of mesent tree now see the diagram again this root of mesent tree while its attachment along this posterior abdominal wall it is crossing these all these structures and the structures crossed by the root of mesent tree madam diagram dekho mere taraf nahi jab samajh mein aayega this is abdominal aorta so it is crossing first abdominal aorta clear second what is this duodenum so it is crossing the third part of duodenum or horizontal part of the duodenum and then it is crossing the blucular area inferior vena cava it is crossing the inferior vena cava then it is crossing this is the ureter blucular and also crossing the gonadal vessels red color so the root of mesent tree crossing these structures starting from above you can say the abdominal aorta the inferior vena cava the horizontal part of the duodenum and also crossing the ureter and the gonadal vessels so all these vessels and structures are crossed by the root of mesent tree so this is common question then normal thing which you don't require the diagram the clinical importance of the peritoneum as in the beginning i have told you that it is a serous sac peritoneal cavity is serous sac which is filled up with the serous fluid and this serous fluid helps in the or lubricate the two surfaces so the viscous can move easily all right this is the normal condition but sometimes the intraperitoneal fluid intraperitoneal fluid they increase and when the intraperitoneal fluids increase they filled up this peritoneal cavity patient came abdominal cavity full or ear and feeling problem in taking respiration and other normal activities then the doctor do the procedure take out the peritoneal fluid and this process is called paracentesis paracentesis abdominis 
in which the doctor inject the insert the cannula and before inserting the cannula they remove the urine from the kidney by passing the catheter so the kidney is free no urine collection is there afterwards the cannula is inserted the cannula is inserted in the linea alba i hope you understand the linea alba itte parishan mat ho in the anterior abdominal wall midline of the anterior abdominal wall there is linea alba or all the aponeuroses of the flat muscles they are choose here this linea alba is bloodless so the doctor insert the cannula in the anterior abdominal wall midline in the then take out the fluid this is called the paracentesis abdominis one thing is this second thing the peritoneum is also used as a peritoneal dialysis in peritoneal dialysis peritoneal dialysis is done in the patient suffering from the renal failure the patient who is suffering from the renal failure what happens that through this peritoneal cavity the urea in renal failure patient the urea is increased in blood level the urea is very much increased in the blood level and that is dangerous so that urea is excreted out that urea is excreted out or evacuated through this peritoneal cavity that is called peritoneal dialysis so these are the conditions which are used by the peritoneum another thing normally as i have told you that it is filled up with the serous fluid but in some patients the air can collected in the peritoneal cavity air can collect in the peritoneal cavity that is called pneumoperitonitis pneumoperitonitis or pneumoperitoneum air collected in the peritoneal cavity in some patients the blood may collect in the peritoneal cavity that is called hemoperitoneum hemoperitoneum and one thing i have told you the food may collect in the peritoneum that is called ascites ascites a s c i t i e s ascites when you will come in the final and going to attend the ward you will see there the many patients suffering from the ascites so as the doctor speak a patient is suffering from the ascites you must click in your mind what is the ascites that is excess of the peritoneal fluid collected in the peritoneal cavity that is called ascites rest of the thing i will tell you on the second class of peritoneum the vertical and disposition and all that this part the transverse colon and this thing that i will show you in the diagram not here at present